Right, um, good morning and welcome everyone. Um, this is Sarah and she's going to be running the session today. I don't know if you can see everybody's names. I can, but I don't know if everyone can. Uh, feel free to use the chat to um, add your comments and I will, um, Sarah will prompt me and I will read them out. Or alternatively, if you just want to put your mic on and um, tell us yourself. There we are, we've got another person joining us. Uh, so let's just go for it and over to you, Sarah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, welcome, everybody. And thank you for joining us. Um, it's really exciting to be here with you. This is the third of these three sessions that we've done. Um, and you'll be able to watch the others back if you want to, um, as well as this one, because um, we've had lovely role models at every single session. Um, and, and I think that that's made each one individual. Um, so whilst they've been done regionally in South Wales and West Wales and North Wales, um, if you want to, if, if to go back and have a look at different things, um, please do watch each one because I'm sure you'll get something different from each of the sessions. Um, but thank you for being here with us live today. It's really lovely to be with you. Um, what I'm going to do is just give you a bit of a whistle stop tour through the early steps of setting up a business um, or you, you know becoming self-employed. Um, the slides will be available um, and do stay in touch with Quarateg because they will be able to support you through those stages of setting up your business. Um, we have the lovely page from Simply Do, um, who is going to give us a little intro into the um, Simply Do platform and how that can help you with not just setting up your business, but going through the different ideas, um, because I don't know if you're anything like me or the other people that we've got here um, who have gone into business, who um, will constantly have ideas all the time of what was about this? Could that work? Um, and so the Simply Do platform is there to kind of help you and support you and support each other um, through through putting together those ideas and fleshing them out. Um, we also have the lovely Natalie, um, who is an illustrator specialising in character based illustration and hand lettering, um, who's going to share her journey with us. And Lowry from Casgliad. See, I knew I'd get it wrong the minute I press record. Is no. that right? Yeah. Oh, it, it just, I just lack confidence in my while speaking. I really do. I need to, that's going to be my thing to work on. Um, and so Lowry's going to tell us all about selling contemporary home rare and artwork um, and, and how you gave up your full time job to pursue this passion for contemporary design. Um, I got to say, I did have a nosy at your um, site when I was looking at a little bit more about you and I was lost for about half an hour doing my virtual Christmas shop. Um, so I think I just need to like click that page and drop it to my family now. Um, it's really, really beautiful. So well done. Um, yeah, so we'll have a little chat with Natalie and Lowry, um, but really, you know, the focus of this workshop is going to be the really early stages. Um, and it's some of the things that I followed when I was setting up um, my own social enterprise. I'd gone to formal business workshops, um, but I was quite often put off by those or overwhelmed by some of the phrases that came out, things like executive summaries or competitor analysis. Um, and I just think, I don't know. I just know what I'm good at and I want to turn that into making money. Um, and so I'll talk you through some of the ways to kind of build that confidence into taking that step into um, running a business. Um, and, and yeah, for me, what I wanted to do was focus on the things that I was good at um, and the motivation that I had to help others and support other women to find their passion. Um, and so that's why I'm here with you today. Um, Natalie, Lowry, who would like to go first to tell us a little bit more about you and what it is that you do? Shall I go first? That's Maybe. great, thanks. I'll be brave. Um, yeah, so I'm Natalie. I'm based in Rosesma in North Wales, so just outside of Mould. Um, and I'm a freelance illustrator. Um, so I work for all sorts, really. Work for editorial illustration, publishing, um, merchandise, I do mural work, um, anything and everything, really. Um, I always feel a bit of an imposter syndrome when I come on here to do this because I never really set out to be in business. Um, my business plan really, I suppose, started when I was eight years old and um, I just love to draw. And that is that is literally the business plan. That's that's it done. Um, 
and yeah, I, I remember, I was probably quite a dramatic kid, and I remember being eight, that was my earliest memory in school, and we had like a, a drawing session where we had to have, um, we had to bring a picture in, we had to like tear it in half or cut it in half, and we had to draw the other side to try and, so that you're trying to complete a, a portrait. And I mean, this is where I say I didn't think I was going to get into business because I'm not organised at all. So typical Natalie, completely forgot, running out of, uh, out of the house to go into the car to go to school. And I tore David Beckham off my mum's calendar, ran to, to school to, to go and draw the other side of his face. And, and yeah, it went well. I say it went well. Eight-year-old Natalie thought it went well. The teacher thought it went well. If I look back now, it was probably a blob with, with just dot eyes. But but that recognition, I think, and that pride of something that I'd created and that love of doing it, I'd love doing it. And um, in creating that, I remember walking out of school that day, and this is where the dramatic thing came in. I thought, if I can, and I genuinely remember saying this to myself, if I can wake up every day and, and do that, draw and create, I'd be happy. That would be me set. And quite typically, I suppose, of being a creative, I had that idea and I, that was me set from eight years old then until the end of uni that was the idea I had was I'm gonna I'm gonna create every day and I mean I, I met with like um you know careers advice and things like that and and I think I'm gonna make myself sound really old now I'm not I'm not old but um when you, when we I was in school and had chats with career advice they we had like two options, I think, if you wanted to pursue art, which was to become a teacher, which is a fine vocation, um, or to maybe be like a fine artist where you create paintings and, and hope to then sell them. And I never really saw myself doing either of those. Um, one thing that I do kind of enjoy, which ties into business, I think, is that I quite enjoy problem solving. So that's where the illustration comes in, where I kind of meet with clients and, you know, we problem solve together of how I can take my skills and apply that to what they're, they're after. And so I really like that. And um, I guess I kind of stumbled upon illustration. Um, I read the, the syllabus and things like that. And it was about taking, you know, creating and an artwork, meeting it with a brief and, and applying that to then different things. And, and yeah, I, I kind of ran with it, did, did uni. And then um, in a way it kind of just snowballed as things do. And, and that's kind of how my career went. Um, and I think the deciding factor, really, I always had a part time job. I've never had to quit like a full time job or anything, but I had a part time job all through college, all through uni. And I've always been, again, going back to like my younger years, I've always been a worrier. I'm a complete overthinker. It, it's still with me today. And um, I think that again escalated when I, just as I left uni and was taking that step of, right, what's next? How do I get my stuff out there? How do I want this to work? Do I want it to be? Do I want to go in in house somewhere and work that way, or do I want to be completely freelance? And um, all of a sudden, these worries that I'd always had be began to really affect my day to day life. I was having panic attacks for a solid week. I'd convinced myself I couldn't breathe, um, so I was in and out of doctors trying to get some sort of answers. And eventually, um, yeah, got diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder to the point where it affected my day to day life so much. And I, I was about twenty one at this point. And I think all of a sudden I was presented with, I can either stay in my part-time job and carry on like portraits on the side and things like that. And I'd still have anxiety or I could take that leap and, and do what I'd done all those years. You know, I'd invested my time and developing the skills and the style that I wanted to draw with. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of had that in a way, I say that the diagnosis was a bit of a liberation because I kind of knew what was right in my head. For a solid week, I was genuinely convinced I was going out of my mind. So in a way, it was nice to kind of have that diagnosis and recognise that no matter what I do now, this anxiety is going to be with me. And I think in a way, it's kind of been able, been enabled me to, to really understand myself and know, you know, in business when I need to push myself. Um, being freelance, obviously, I'm the only person who's doing it. Um, there's a lot of plates spinning. So... So yeah, I know because of the anxiety, I know that when my anxiety is getting too much or when I need to push myself or, or when I need to take it easy or things like that. So in a way, it's kind of helped to, to understand how I work best. And and yeah, at, at the heart of everything that I do is still that eight-year-old girl who loves to draw. That That's always the drive for me. Um, and just to always stay excited by what I'm creating. So so I think that's the real job. The, the drawing's not so bad. It's, it's 
making sure that I'm always excited about what it is that I'm going to create and how I can do that. Um, and yeah, and then like I say, it's just always snowballed. Thank you so much. Um, I've made a few notes of things to ask you some questions, but I think I, I just particularly wanted to thank you for being so open um, and honest. Um, and it's so, so true. And um, I think for me, one of the biggest learning curves of um, working for yourself is to trust yourself and trust your gut. Um, and, and yeah, to just, you know, it's so easy to worry, to overthink. Um, you know, one of the things we'll touch on later is, you know, it's quite easy to look at Instagram and think that everyone else is kind of, you know, going perfectly. When really, you know, we all know that people are swans and they're swimming and they're, they're trying to do lots of things. But as, that's not the image that we put out into the world. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, I think, you know, it's really important to see that you've you know, you've always known what it is that you're good at and what your skills are. Um, and it isn't just the passion that you've got for drawing and for art, it's things like problem solving. Um, and, and quite often, you know, you can go into business thinking, oh, well, I know I'm good at this one thing, but actually there's loads of different skills that you can bring into that piece of work. Um, so it's it's kind of thinking wider, isn't it? Of, you know, what are the array of skills and how can I turn that into something that I, I want to do that will bring me joy? And, and like you say, so that you can wake up every day doing what it is that you love. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, what's your favourite thing that you have drawn or a client that you've worked with that you thought, I'm really, really pleased with that? Um, I got asked this the other day, you know, so I should have, I yeah. should have thought. And on, when people ask, all of a sudden, everything you've ever done over the six years I've been employed, gone. Can't remember. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm always quite excited for the next thing, I suppose, as well. Um, I always really enjoy working with the community. I do murals in schools and things like that. So that's always quite nice um, to be able to, because again, going back to when I said where, when I was younger, maybe the, the options were a bit more limited, I suppose, or what I knew was out there was, was limited. Whereas now I think it's much more widely known how diverse the career options are if you're creative. Um, so I think in a way I kind of like that, you know, children of all ages can see that, that you can be an active creative work in in different environments then so so yeah I quite like the community work that I do oh that's really lovely yeah and, and it isn't just the work that you're you're actually producing it's the impact that it's got on the people around you and and yeah. that yeah children can see there's more than those two straight options when it comes to a career in art um I always remember when I was in school and I went to the careers advisor and said well, I don't want to go and do um, to university. Nowhere my family had gone, didn't understand what university is like. And so she pulled open this A4 folder, flicked through some available jobs and said, well, there's a job at the Wheeling Bin Cleaning Company for £60 a week. And I was like, OK, I'll try uni. <laughs> um, so, yeah, sometimes you just need someone to show you something that will then um, kind of push you like you say kind of liberate you to say do you know what I'm just going to go for it I'm going to try that that scarier option yeah. um, thank you so much I'm sure we'll have loads more questions for you but Lori if we could come to you and learn about your business journey and um, how you have kind of brought your passion into supporting lots of other makers and artists in Wales um, to get their beautiful work available yeah, so um, I suppose my background is in design um, and um, I'm a qualified architect, um, studied art architecture and through my career um, as an architect I found that there was a lot of talented people across Wales, you know, making, making things and, um, um, well, I that's where the idea really came for Casgliad um, when we set it up um, just over a year ago. Um, so the reason, well, the idea came from wanting to find, you know, um, these makers and artists um, to renovate a, a project, um, but it was very time consuming to, to find them. So. The idea was to put everyone on one platform um, and then we could promote them and sell their work um, 
so that's in a nutshell where the idea came from so now um just it's been just over a year and we've got 30 makers and artists from people making love spoons to um ceramics to um welsh thick chairs uh, so there's a real variety of, of different things and you know I've, I've loved meeting different people from across wales um and i think the response has been amazing from you know 48 percent of our sales have come from outside wales so it's great for the makers and artists to see that you know their work is appreciated not just in wales but also outside of wales um, um so yeah that's cascade in a in a nutshell so you are one of these um, wonderful people who took that step in the middle of a global pandemic to kind of go out there and do something different. Um, what was that like and, and how did you go through that process of thinking, yeah, I'm going to do it? Well, I suppose I gave up my full time job um, in January, so I didn't okay. know what was to come. <laughs> um, but I suppose, you know, setting up an online business um was probably a good idea um in hindsight um and i suppose i it was quite different to my day-to-day -day job so i had quite a bit of learning to do um so you know months um were taken just trying to learn as much as possible of how i was going to set this it was more of a, a tech um a setup really yeah. um, so really pushing myself out of my comfort zone in terms of how it would work and you know um, with so many different people involved just to get the best system in place um, so that took a bit of time just to learn and you know I think we're quite lucky in Wales there is quite a lot of support out there um, for your support as well so so where did you go to to get that support and with that technical stuff? Because like you say, you know, I hold my hand up. That's that's the bit for me where I think, ah, where do I go? I don't know how to do the tech. Um, I suppose, you know, I started with Business Wales. Yeah. Uh, so you get an advisor um, just to talk through your idea. And then um, there's quite a few workshops um, that Business Wales do. Um, and Town Square was also um, good in terms of lots of different workshops for free on all different aspects of running a business. Um, and I found that, you know, I, I learned something from all of those different workshops, definitely. Yeah, so it's just diving in, isn't it? And, and thinking, yeah, that you're going to have a go and, and you will learn something from each of those different um, workshops that you attend. Yeah, um, just having as many conversations with different people as you can, really. You never yeah. know where that conversation can, can lead to either. Definitely, definitely. Um, and so how do you manage? Um, is it just you that runs the business and then you've got um, all of these makers that kind of come in that, that you work with? Yeah, so it's just me. Um, and I also do a bit of my architecture. Um, I've also set up a self-employment doing that as well so um, I've got enough on my plate <laughs> um, but you know I don't keep any stock so um, that makes it easy in terms of how the system works. Okay yeah that's really cool so you've kind of seen where those stresses could be and, and managed that really really well I think. Um, I find it really interesting of um, someone who lives close to me who is um she's also an architect and ended up taking her kind of architecture skills um and going into photography and and um and that kind of she also does some kind of house design as well um so she's juggling the two but her photography is really interesting because she obviously looks at things in a very different way to other people um and and so it is really interesting to think that the skills that you have you you can turn them into into something else that is a business that makes you money and brings you joy in the work that you do. Yeah, definitely, you know, during my architecture years, I love to be on site and try and, well, I went to Tyree to build a 
a boat house and just the appreciation for craftsmanship and you know the work that goes into making a piece of art or creating a love spoon um i think it's important you know when you're considering buying that piece how much hours has gone into it um and i feel like i i can appreciate that so i want to you know showcase people's work as much as possible and where do you find these people obviously you said you know in, in the past that you've it takes a lot of time how do you continue to devote that time and where do you find these people to to showcase um especially when you know we've had to be um, at home for so much of the last year um i think mainly it was um you know instagram um and going on the internet um and word of mouth sometimes um yeah definitely when yeah when you um when you start going down that Instagram rabbit hole, or, yeah, you have those kind of um, serendipitous conversations with someone and all of a sudden it's opened you to a new world of people, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's one great thing about all the people that have taken part in this, um, is that you all have each other to call on. Um, and particularly, um, you know, it's, it's lovely if we could bring Paige in um, to hear about Simply Do, because the Simply Do platform is there to help you to build that network um, and to get to know people so that you're not thinking I'm on my own with my idea. Um, it, it's lovely that Simply Do have been able to join us um, because they were really supportive and Lee, your wonderful founder Paige, um, was um, really supportive of me when I was first setting up and I was doing um, a piece of work that was um, looking at uh, social enterprise and supporting women to set up social enterprises and I was invited to speak at um, the Social Enterprise World Forum in Hong Kong which was um, probably about five years ago, six years ago maybe and um, I was like oh my goodness I'm going to be the only person from Wales there and what are they going to want to hear about little old me and um, and I talked to Lee and he said well take the platform you've used it you you know you've supported people with it so take that and show it to other people um, and he, he didn't charge me anything to use this platform to share with all the women that we were getting to set up social enterprises and um, he just said you know you're doing something for good it's all about um, social enterprise and supporting others to do great things so take it out there and go with it um, yeah, so it's lovely to kind of come full circle and, and hear back from Simply Do because um, they were so supportive to me. So Paige, if you want to share a bit more about what the platform is so that everyone's aware of that. Um, and then at the same time, if anyone's got any questions for, for um, our lovely guests, then please drop them in the chat. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, so it sounds like a wonderful experience in Hong Kong there. I'm glad Simply Do was able to Kind of help you through that help you through that um so yeah as mentioned my name is Paige I've been a member of Simply Do for the past three years now working um on the product and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the platform and how you can use it to kind of join an idea sharing culture and just support other people um, other people with similar ideas so a little bit about Simply Do to begin. So Simply Do Ideas in a nutshell is they're an innovation platform for idea capturing that enables large organisations to deliver better, faster innovation um, across their organisation. Our roots are in organisation, um, sorry, our roots are in education where we work to strip back business jargon from idea creation and simplifying the process to allow students to make great ideas happen, simplifying the process to make it accessible. Um, it's been a privilege to work with NatWest Cymru, Quaritig and everybody attending today to enable more women to get started in the early stage ideas and through the use of the open platform that I'm going to showcase soon. So um, next, I'm going to run through a short demo of the app and the platform. And if anybody wants to get involved themselves, sign up. Or if you are a member and you want to sign in, I'll include a link in the chat here. So if you do follow that link, actually, I'll share my screen now. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Can people see that? Yeah, great. Y yes, we can. Yeah. Great. I'm just going to. So 
If you follow the link, you'll be taken to this page. And like I said, the registration sign up process is pretty typical, the same you'd have with um, any, any platform that you've used before. So if you do decide to follow along with this, when you sign in, you can come to the challenges tab and you can click on the make it happen challenge. So make it happen is designed to be a safe digital space for women. Um, the first thing we can see when we come to this challenge is that you get an idea of what the challenge is through, through an overview. The video here, I'd recommend maybe watching in your own time. It's just kind of a summary of what the challenge entails and it's just going to expand on what I'm saying today. So further down below, it's just iterating that the fact that this platform and Quaritig is meant to be an open idea community, a safe space for everybody to explore their early stage business ideas. And you can do this from the comfort of your own home, which is ideal in this crazy kind of COVID times that we're in at the moment. There's also kind of um, an example of another young lady, Adele, who created an idea, a business idea through the platform recently. And she's actually now in the early stages of building, building her idea out and starting a small business. And this all came from, you know, creating a little idea on a platform and then getting support and funding. And it just shows that it, it is possible, you know, to make these ideas, turn them into business businesses and if you know if you put an idea out there then that's how you can start getting things going so i'm just going to talk through how the challenge can be relevant to you guys today and that's in three ways so the first way is that and this is probably the easiest way to get involved is that you can just support other women in the network and to do that you can sign up through the link i just sent in you can come to this challenge and then you can view like and comment on other ideas that people have submitted and these will be other business ideas and I'm sure there'll be you know a range of ideas from art to architecture you know as I've spoken about this morning. Secondly then you might also have a business idea of your own if you do you can also capture that through the challenge and I'll just scroll down and you can see that there's a create your idea button here I won't run through it now but if you were to click this button and you create your idea you'll be given a blank form you can fill out with an overview of your idea and some images and any personalization you want to add at which point the idea is completely in a draft state nobody's going to be able to view your idea it's completely private if you know it's all about just getting something out of there get started because once you started something you can always continue and carry it forward if you do feel like you've got your idea to a point where you might be ready to share it with others you can actually submit the idea um, at which point then other people who are on the platform and are viewing this challenge will be able to view your idea, like, comment, get feedback, perhaps other people will become, you know, request to become involved in your idea. Um, so yeah, that's how you, you can create an idea from this button here. And then if you want to su su show support to other ideas and other people who've created ideas, you can come to the view, ide view other ideas tab. This is just going to take you to the ideas section of the challenge. As you can see, there's three ideas here right now, some around Dementia Connect, school cooking books, and there's an example idea that I'll run through shortly just to show what, 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 what a kind of idea might, might include. If you did want to show any support, then you could comment and like on the little buttons on the card. Of course, this is the whole purpose of this network. It's all about sharing and opening up and just women supporting other women. So. I'll take it, we can take a look now into what an example idea might include. So this idea is kind of a collaborative idea. It's been worked on by a lady called Claire and a, a guy called Josh. We can see from the description, they seem to be starting some sort of a clothing company. They've given a bit of an overview there to give people an idea more in, in, in detail about what their idea, what their business idea includes. They've talked about what support that might be useful from other members of the community. So this could be your chance to reach out to someone if you have knowledge about access to co-working co spaces and you think you could help out with this. You know, this could be your opportunity to comment and leave any relevant information you have. But also within your own idea, obviously, you'd reach out for the sort of support that you are, you know, that you feel you need. There's also um, some optional feed fields then to upload an image. This could be a logo, this could be designs, this could be, you know, if you have a cake shop, you, this could be pictures of your cakes, it could be whatever, whatever you need to be. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a fully fledged logo like this. It could be a doodle on a notepad that you snap a picture and you upload. And it just, it just helps the idea to stand out and people to get a feel for what your idea might, might be about. 
There's also an optional section where you might want to include a video that just explains your idea. And this, again, it's just all about personalizing your idea and making it stand out. Um, at the bottom here then is the comments, which is the section where you can, you know, you might have a question about the idea or you might want to show support and speak to the owner of the, the idea. And this can be done through this section here. So um, I'll come back to the challenge now and I'll just recap what I've gone over now because I, so I, I, everybody's taken it in because um, I do appreciate I speak quite quickly, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we've basically, we've looked at the platform, we've looked at the challenge, make it happen, which is all about being an open idea sharing space. We've looked at how you yourselves can create an idea, how you can submit it to then share it with others, how you can view other people's ideas and how you can engage with them, liking and commenting. The final thing um, that I want to talk about then are groups. So groups in this term, uh, referring to kind of communities inside the platform that bring you together with other, fe 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 sorry, with other female entrepreneurs. So to find these groups, you can navigate to the groups tab and they're kind of split up on a regional basis. So you guys will probably want to join the North Wales group. You can view the group and just join the group simply to request to join. Once you're inside of the group, then you kind of get an activity fee, which is just a breakdown of things going on inside of the group. You can look at challenges that are open to the group. In this case, it's the Make It Happen challenge that we've been talking about. You can view other group members. And at the end of the session today, um, I, I would really recommend that if anybody does have some time to sign up today to join this group, and then everybody who's joined the call in the session today will be available here. And if there's somebody that you want to reach out and contact, you can do so by directly messaging them on the right hand side. There's also then um, an open discussion forum if you just have some more general questions about today. And if you just want to get a discussion going, you can do so here. And um, I think I'll also note that any resources from the session today will be, sh will be shared in this discussion here. So you should have access to everything that's being talked about today. I'm just gonna uh, stop sharing now. I um, I don't know if that's worked, but I hope that was um, useful to run through and I hope I explained everything clearly. But of course, if there are any more questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll answer them as best as I can. Um, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Paige. Um, I have had a go of that platform um, when it first came out in the original format last year. Um, and it's really helpful to kind of get your idea out of your mind and on, on I say paper, but, you know, obviously on, on out of your mind and onto something that is um, kind of clearer so that you can explain it to other people. Um, and it's really great that you've got this space to kind of think, you know, it's a safe space to, to put your idea out there and um, because it can be quite difficult if you go to your family and friends who, you know, they'll have already reasons why they want to protect you from maybe putting your, your savings into a business or, you know, kind of um, leaving your job or going part time so that you can do this. They'll have reasons why they want to keep you safe and, and to kind of maybe put you off not because they want to dampen your idea, but because sometimes people want to protect you from, from anything that could be a risk. Um, so this will be a safe space for you to kind of open and talk about your ideas and get feedback on what could work, or you know, it's, it's your first audience of, of people who will be honest and open and kind. Um, and yeah, just to kind of help you think about, um, you know, what could be the hurdles? What do you need to learn? So really, really do make use of it because it's it's something that's really important for all of us to, to kind of make sure that we stay in touch with each other and, and talk about these things because it can be often a lonely place unless you reach out. And so this is a lovely space to, to kind of meet and talk to other people in a similar frame. Um, I'm just going to get my slides ready, but if everyone wants to make sure they've got a pen and paper, um, just while you, while I do that, Okay. Perfect. Can everyone see this okay? Yeah, we can. So right, just get it into slideshow. Perfect. Okay, amazing. So these are just um a couple of people who have gone through um, this process of setting up their business um, because it's lovely to have extra role models and, and see faces of women who've done it. Um and both 
both of these women um, have been nominated and I think both have won um, Women's Buy Awards with Quietech, haven't they? I'm sure they're both winners, but but if not, you'll, you'll be able to have a look at them and we'll get someone to put a link to Women's Buy so you can see some other women and their journeys in business. Um, so yeah, is there an idea in you and how do we bring that out? Um, I wanted to say a thank you to Cora Teg, to Simply Do and to NatWest for supporting you all to do this. Um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to kind of share my journey and this experience with you. Um, so a bit about me. Um, my background, I got into business um, because in 2013 I was a new mum and um, I had the rug pulled from under me because I was, I think my daughter was um, about eight or nine weeks old when I had a letter in the post to say that I was being made redundant from a job that I really loved. Um, back then, about nine years ago, um, flexible working and um, kind of, you know, decent part time jobs weren't as easy as they are to find now. Um, and, and even now, then, you know, it isn't it isn't all roses. Um, but back then I was like, I just feel like, you know, I, I'm looking for that golden ticket. Um, you know, j just like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, I can't find the job that I want, but I want to continue to do the work that I love and take care of my daughter. Um, so I knew that I had to find a different way to do that. And that was by um, setting up my own business. Um, and this could be you, you know, maybe in COVID you've not worked for a while or maybe you've been a carer or maybe you've just realised that you don't fit the corporate box of um, working for an employer. Um, or maybe you just want to, um, exactly like Natalie, um, you just want to wake up every day and do something that you love. Um, so we've all got different reasons that we're here, but definitely if I can do it, so can you. Um, I love that picture because it just shows how much you are able to juggle things when you don't think you can. Um, because I was asked at the last minute to do a live radio show. And so I took my two children along um, and had my son bouncing on my lap. Um, whilst my daughter decided to, at the age of three, take over and tell them everything that she'd done in school that day on, on the radio. Which was very funny because all I ever got was nothing, it's boring. Um, and so maybe all I needed was to put a microphone in front of it. Um, so I wanted to start by asking you what it is that you really want from work. Um, you know, why is it that you want to be your own boss? Um, maybe if anyone wants to write anything in the chat um, or, you know, feel free to kind of join a discussion. Um, I want you to think about it in a sense of, you know, what is it inside that's brought you here today? What made you sign up for this workshop? Um, is it that you've got an idea? that you really want to get out there? Is it that you've seen a gap in the market and um, exactly like Lowry? Or is it that you simply want to have a different day-to-day -day life than you have now? Um, and yeah, if, if there's anything that comes up in the chat, let me know. But it's it would be really nice to hear from Natalie and Lowry about you know, your experiences of, you know, what was it that kind of spoke to you when you were kind of moving into working for yourselves? We've got um, Sophie typing at the moment, so when she's finished, I'll let you know, Sarah. Amazing. Natalie, Lowry, is there anything that you could add? Of, you know, what was it that kind of t that got you over that line of, of taking the leap into business? I think this is where I probably have to do a shout out to my parents, you know. Um, I'm incredibly lucky to have a supportive, well, whole family, really. But from a very young age, my mum and dad have both always told us to me and my brother that whatever it is that you enjoy wherever your passion is if you can you know run with that and and if that then pays off into a job then you're set so I've literally had that in my head for the whole time that's probably why eight-year-old Natalie said that is because my mum and dad always kind of instilled that in us so not so much just they weren't pushing um like for instance my brother really liked cars so he's a mechanic so they've always kind of instilled in us that whatever it is that makes you happy then then the worst thing is that you know you've tried and it, and it's a hobby then just whatever it is that that really you know ignites something in you then then hold on to that for as long as you can and and luckily so far it's paid off but yeah i think for me that's always been a drive is for that i've never really had you know like well when's the real job coming you know like i've never had that kind of yeah. question pushed at me um which i know is quite fortunate and, and from a privileged position but 
but yeah that that's probably where mine stems from really that, that's lovely and um you've just reminded me of something of um many years ago I was working somewhere and I applied for promotion and I didn't get it and not long after my boss who'd interviewed me left and I had the job of cleaning up her office because she left abruptly um and then and I found the notes that she'd made on my interview and I couldn't help myself and I read it and she'd scribbled on the paper and um, she she just keeps saying that she wants to help people and I thought do you know what I don't care that I didn't get that job because if, if it's come across that all I want to do is help others and I was working for a charity at the time, um, then, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I realise that that is intrinsically what gets me out of bed in the morning. It's doing things that will help others. Um, and whilst I didn't get that job, you know, to, to get that kind of feedback that I wasn't expecting that came across to me in an interview, um, obviously really, really kind of sat with me because it's something that I do in every every piece of work that I've done. It's, you know, my drive is that I want to get out and help other people. Um, so it's interesting that you don't know where those questions or those responses are going to come from. Um, but, you know, you can have those light bulb moments of, yeah, I know what it is I want to do and I know why I'm being driven to do these things. Um, Laurie, is there anything that you wanted to add of, you know, how, how you kind of moved from from being an arch architect day to day to to being more of a, an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think um, what Natalie said um, resonates with me as well as having that passion to start off with. Um, and then, you know, I always wanted to have my own business, um, but I think that passion sort of carries you through through the hard times when you think, oh, you know, this is not going anywhere. Um, and what appealed to me was if I could set up a business that, you know, it allowed me to be flexible. I could have the freedom of driving it away that I wanted to. Um, and that makes me happy um, and makes um, every day, you know, interesting and, and different, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it's you're so right. It's not just the flexibility of, you know, of, of the hours that you want to work. It's it's having that flexibility to say, you know, I want to take the business in this direction and I feel that this is the right way to go and I know that this is the gap in the market um, and not having to kind of ask permission from anyone else to do that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, unless there's anything coming in, I just wanted to go through some um, results. Can I just say, um, yeah, Sophie please. says uh, she wants to write for a living, like drawing with Natalie. It's always been her passion. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I've just come across actually last night I sent it to a friend and um, there's a lot of writers workshops coming up at, at chapter in Cardiff um, and I know that's Cardiff but there are some of them online um, so I'll I'll drop a link into the chat before we finish um, because there's some there's some interesting um, kind of online talks with different writers and publishers so I'll make sure that you've got a copy of that or you know do drop me a line later if, if I can't find it whilst we're on the call and um, that might be helpful to you. Um, so, yeah, lots of, of this was a survey that was undertaken with women who've gone into business or wanted to go into business. Um, and I think it's really interesting because whenever we've done this workshop and when we did it last year, um, you know, these were the kind of comments that came up. Um, you know, women go into business because they want to be their own boss, because they want to grow their income um, to pursue a passion. We've talked a lot about that today. Um, and to have flexibility, not just in their work life, but also in, you know, in, in the work that they want to do and, and their belief in, in what they think will be a success. And also to have increased time with our family. Um, I think it's really important to say that, you know, running your own business isn't about, you know, having that badge of, oh, I work so hard. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm working 18 hour days. Please don't do that. You know, if you're doing that, then. And it's not going to be good for your health in the long term. Um, it's it, it's really important, I think, particularly in lockdown, to make sure that you get outside and get into nature and, and walk because you know Wales has some of the most beautiful spaces, particularly in North Wales, lovely places that you can walk and get out. And I find that I'm much more productive for six hours a day if I take a really long walk for an hour than just sitting at a desk for a long time, trying to figure out how to do things that I've not done before, um, which can be something that you do quite often when you are starting up a business. 
Um, so for me, um, you know, it's, it's about looking at the benefits and the drawbacks of setting up business. You know, we know all the drivers of why we want to take that step. Um, and, and like some of the people have said here, business isn't easy. It's, you know, you do have that roller coaster of emotions um, of, you know, doubting yourself when things are being tough. Um, and it does take perseverance, perseverance and dedication. Um, and you need to have that ability to kind of come back after setbacks. Um, you know, for me, I wanted to do the things that I enjoyed to utilise the skills that I had and to be paid a salary that I felt I was worth uh, that, that I could um, be paid whilst I juggled my family. Um, I was talking to a lot of women at the time who had had small children and were saying, oh, you know, go and um, just find a part time job that's easy. Um, that's, you know, kind of maybe you could you could work in a supermarket. And I thought that's great. And I love the people that do that because it's such an essential job, but it isn't for me. Um, I'd worked really hard to get where I was in my career and I didn't want to go backwards simply because I'd had children. Um, and then I, you know, there were, there were lots of comments, which is why I particularly want to say a shout out to Qualitech because um, having a small child, it was then a new um, stereotype that I fitted of, oh, that's great that you can go into business. Um, you can you can balance the baby whilst you work from the kitchen table. Um, my skill is in delivering courses. And whilst this is great, it wouldn't be so great if I had a small child on my knee or being bounced in a bouncer wanting to be fed. Um, um, and so the opportunity that I had um, was I applied and worked for and won a bursary with Quarateg um, to have office space and um, business support in those early days. And that made a massive, massive difference to me, um, not only to get me out of um, my home so that I actually was in an office space where people were taking me seriously, um, but also to have access to people who could support, that I could bounce ideas off, that I could say, do you know, this is the bit that's tricky. It's the marketing or it's the kind of, you know, the ins and outs of a website. Um, and, and they were able to support me and do that. That bursary isn't available right now. Um, it was a one-off opportunity a few years ago, but there is so much support that Quarateg do have to offer you. Um, and, and as well as the platform, um, really, really do make use of it because um, quite often it's about being in a space, which is what the Simply, Pla Simply Do platform is, um, that enables you to say, this is something I'm struggling with. Can I talk to someone who would, would like to um, kind of bounce ideas with me about this particular issue? Um, you know, it, it felt for me when I went into business of I wanted to be able to um, work flexibly. But the reality was that, um, you know, it was just me. There was no one who could pick up the slack. And so if my daughter was ill, it was my husband who had to take time off work because I couldn't say to my client, sorry, I can't work today. Um, you know, something like this. If, if you've organised an event, you have to be there. You've got to be able to deliver it. Um, so it's it's really about thinking, you know, what are the, the steps that I might need to overcome and how um, will I make sure that I can that I can do that? Um, you know, we were able to put systems in place so that I knew that that was one of the struggles that I would have. So I could work around it in different ways. Um, I wanted to also talk about some of the barriers to business. Um, these can be external or internal barriers. Um, and, and I wanted to start with external because it's quite easy for us to tell ourselves, you know, I I can't take that leap because I don't have enough money to invest in a business or um, I, I I don't um, I, I don't have childcare, so I I haven't got the space to do it or I don't have an office. You know, there's lots of things that we can we can put in in our minds of thinking why we don't take that step. Um, and we see those as external barriers. But there's a book that I read um, many years ago, and it, it's an interesting read if you want to pick it up. And it's called The Chimp Paradox. Um, and it talks a lot about self-limiting beliefs and how you know you've got these two brains your chimp brain which is there um you know back from the days when we were hunter gatherers that protects you from danger and, and will kind of speak into your mind and say you can't do that because we need to protect you from danger but in the modern world um you know we don't have dangerous animals that we have to be protected from and um, we're living in a world where um some of those 
protections from danger um, are really things that we we don't need. So we'll tell ourselves, um, you know, this this is something that I I can't do um, because it's that part of your brain that wants to protect you. Um, but most of these external barriers can be overcome. There's always a way to run through the steps and think about how you can you can turn those barriers around and overcome them. Um, so I just wanted to ask if anyone is um, is wants to be honest and open about you know any barriers that they feel to setting up of why they haven't taken that leap so far. Shall I start with Sophie because she's already written uh, yeah, something about this. OK, so Sophie says I haven't a clue where to start. I have several ideas of what I can write to make a living. Um, she's uh, trained in CV writing and she's got experience in successful bid writing. Uh, I just she doesn't know how to set herself up. Um, she's got loads of ideas, but she needs to figure out how to refine into a successful venture. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's it's kind of thinking. There's so much. Where do I start? Mm, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I, mean, I don't know if there's anyone else who wants to add to that. I'll just add to that. I think sometimes you've got all these ideas and it's hard to, you know, it, you get overwhelmed with yeah. everything. But I think it's breaking it down to small little steps um, and working your th way through this, these steps, knowing, you know, what your end goal is. Um, yeah, those small wins, I suppose, just small progression because I think that especially with my business you know you expect things to happen overnight but I think I'm learning as time goes by you know things don't happen as quickly as you want them it's um yeah it's uh, just working on on things on a daily basis I think it is it's chipping away isn't it at those kind of little little wins that actually build up to where you want to get to um, and we will come back to this later, actually, because I, there are a couple of tools that we'll have um, that we'll talk through that can help you with that. Um, one thing that I was going to add is that when um, I was first setting up, my daughter was really, really young and people would say to me, how on earth did you do this? You know, when you had a small baby at home um, and I I wanted to kind of work on a business plan um, for what I was going to do. And I knew that my daughter, you know, she was really great and that she slept solidly. She had a one and a half hour to maybe two hour nap every day. Um, so I used that time. I would put her down for a nap and I knew I had at least an hour where I could just bang out, um, you know, as much as I could about that business plan. And so over, I think it was about, you know, maybe three or four weeks, just an hour a day chipping away at this. And by the end of it, I had something that I could sit down and think, right, I will go to Business Wales. I have this business plan and then I have someone to talk it through. Um, and, and I was exactly the same before that, thinking, well, I know all these kind of things that I want to do, but where do I sit down? Where do I start? Um, and, and if you just start to chip away at, at making notes and I'll give you um, some ideas and some some support in how how you can formulate a system to kind of get that business plan together. Um, um, but, yeah, it's really about just chipping away, isn't it? Is there anything that you wanted to add, Natalie? Um, I think it's also, it depends like in at what stage you're at, but I know that I find it quite helpful to, to share that then, you know, there's only so much you can do. And sometimes you can look at an idea so much that maybe you talk yourself out of it or, or, you know, overwhelm yourself. And, and I think it's also about putting yourself in the right circles. So I think Lori kind of alluded to it before where you never know where a conversation is going to go. So when you kind of make contacts and connections, you know, to do with the field that maybe you want to be in or, or where you want to take it, it doesn't matter that you don't know how you want that to end, because sometimes all it takes is starting that conversation and seeing how that progresses. Um, I know that a big part of like the things that I do, what my initial idea was, how it then progressed because of that collaboration, talking with other people kind of dramatically changes. So 
So just because I didn't have it all wrapped up at once, um, you just have that initial idea kind of paid off, I suppose, rather than being so focused on one certain thing to be open minded to how that will then will then grow. Definitely, definitely. That's that's really, really important advice. And I'm, I know that Caitlin, who was on our first session, um, you know, she was open and said before she was setting up, she had exactly the same feeling of um, and she works as um, uh, I can't think of the term. It's uh, as a um, executive PA. Alexia, can you remind yeah. me? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember as well. Definitely uh, PA was in the title. Um, I'll have a look and um, I'll just search through my notes. Amazing, yeah. Um, but she said that she was kind of thinking, I've got all these skills and I want to turn them into something, but where do I go? And it was a conversation that she had with someone else who said to her, actually, you're really good at this and this and this. And why don't you turn that around into into something that, you know, is, is a business that you can run? And, you know, a year later, she's absolutely flying. Um so I wanted to just talk about some of these things that, you know, go through all of our minds when, you know, not just setting up a business, but other things um, that you want to do for yourself. Um, quite often we can we can put these barriers in place that stop us. Um, so things like fear of failure, that we don't have enough time in the day, um, you know, maybe things can feel too daunting or, you know, the one that hit me was um, I was delivering training and selling training and I thought but I'm just not a salesperson how do I get over it um and and so there's lots of ways that we can do it um, and overcome those things one in particular was that I um I was even though I was delivering training and I would be okay delivering training to a group of 10 people um I wasn't so comfortable in in speaking in bigger audiences um so I had to just get myself out there and learn it um and the first time I did that was a group of probably about you know 30 people um where i i i said right okay this is what i want to do i'm going to have to take that kind of little leap of faith go for a small audience and and then um you know have ended up many years later being able to um to speak in much bigger platforms because i'd built that confidence slowly and taken those small steps um an important way that we can do that and um, overcome some of those those things that we tell ourselves is to practice positive self-talk um you know sometimes people have said why are you talking about this it, what, how relevant is this to setting up a business um and it's it's much to what um, natalie and laurie have both said of, you know you have those ups and downs and you have those moments where you doubt yourself um but what you need to do is you know be your own champion um and so you know, rather than think of ne negative things like, um, oh, you know, I can't do this or I'm not good enough to do this. Um, tell yourself every day those positive things. It was someone in Quarateg who actually gave me a tip of um, taking little notes and writing some of those positive phrases and sticking them on my laptop. Um, and, and that's something really easy that you can do to kind of tell yourself these positive phrases and, and turn that mindset into something where you are your own champion. Um, you know, maybe it's as easy as sticking a post-it note on your mirror. So every day that you wake up, that you, you know, when you look in the mirror and you're brushing your teeth, that you can tell yourself one little positive thought to start your day. Um, it's, I found it really difficult in the last few weeks to get out of bed in the morning. Um, and normally I'm, you know, I'm up and out at six o'clock in the morning and, um, you know, Try, trying to just get that half an hour before my children wake up where I've got a bit of peace um but I've really struggled recently and it's and I was like oh it's just the weather it's so dark in the mornings that's why I can't wake up and I was saying this to my husband and he said well no it's easy to get out of bed if you do what I do um and and he said that in the morning when his alarm goes off he just um you know celebrates inside and says yes it's the start of a new day and he was like how can you not get out of bed when you think um, about how exciting every new day could be? And it sounds really silly, but, you know, it, it obviously works because he's up and about much quicker than I am. And it's it's a way to just kind of tell yourself, you know, if you're not telling yourself great things, how can um, you expect um, other people to to be positive or to tell those things to you? Um so I wanted to come back to this original point of you know, how we get out what we put in. Um, you know, 
these are phrases that if you notice you, you probably would have said when you're a child you know when you're kind of learning to write of of oh god you know this is really hard I can't do it um, and what we really need to do is is go back to the, almost that childhood self and and think to ourselves in a positive um, rather than thinking oh I give up this is really difficult think to yourself yep yeah, this is hard but I'm going to keep trying I'm going to keep chipping away you know maybe I haven't just figured out that thing that thing yet um and maybe if someone wants to um write in the chat or someone wants to um to join in a conversation um to just think about what are those things that we tell ourselves and and maybe how we can turn it around into a voice that is more positive and that helps us move forward No problem if no one wants to. I don't know whether Natalie or Lori, there's anything that um, that you wanted to add, because I know that you both had mentioned this previously um, about some of those hurdles and how you have overcome them. Yeah, I know, like for me, with my anxiety, um, like even the mere thought of doing something like this, where, you know, you're talking, it stresses me out to no end and people can't understand, like when I say it, like, oh, how do you put yourself through it? But I think what I get out from it by putting myself in the position where I'm not much stressed but challenged. Um, like I mean, I love my comfort zone. I'm quite happily staying it all the time. But I think I've learned that actually I need to push the boundaries. I need to step out from that, you know, time from time to time. To I know my comfort zone's there. I know that you know I'll be able to relax afterwards, and I've had like a nice quiet morning this morning preparing for it so it's being in tune with what I need to be able to then come on and do this and be able to, to form coherent sentences um so I think it's just tapping into like to recognizing that that you know that anxiety is there that nervousness is there you know some nervousness is, is normal um but that that doesn't mean then that I shy away from it doesn't mean that I then like you know say oh no actually I can't attend this the zoom um so it's recognising that, that that's there, that those feelings are being heard. But actually, I kind of sometimes I make myself sound crazy because I like talk as if I'm talking to myself. So I say, no, listen, Natalie, we are going to do this two hours and then we can have like a nice cup of tea afterwards. So I know that that comfort zone's there, but I know that I get a lot more out of challenging my, myself. And, and that goes from business and day to day life as well, yeah. you know, to, yeah. to put yourself in that position where you are being challenged. Um, it actually pays off because otherwise I I wouldn't do anything. Um, you know, I I just shy away. From exactly, it. exactly. I mean, you know, if if you were going from you know your first job, you wouldn't sign up for a marathon at the end of the week. You know, you take it slowly, and and that's exactly the same, isn't it? With with anything, we have to you know take those steps out of our comfort zone, but not push ourselves over the edge instantly, because yeah. then you'll just come running back to that comfort. Um, and for things like this, there was um, there was a, a, a little tip that someone gave me a few years ago that I always use. Um, and it's if you're going to kind of speak on something, um, just take that quiet moment before you do, before you you know you go to any sort of speaking event or have to do, you know, some sort of um, pre presenting, and just count backwards in your head from five, four, three, two, one. Um, and she explained it much better than me because that was her skill. But um, Wendy Derrick, the, the person is, and she said that there's a part of your brain where when you're focusing on that counting, the bit that is anxious has to quieten down. Um, and yeah, it's about acknowledging you understand you're nervous and this is how you're going to overcome those nerves. Um, and we can put some of those systems in place for absolutely everything. Um, so I wanted to move on and talk about our strengths and weaknesses um, and this comes back to some of the comments that have been brought up so far of you know someone has said how there's so many different things that you want to do but you don't know how to pull them together and I think that Natalie this is relevant to to what you were saying about your skills and recognizing what your skills are um, and so I'd like everyone to just make a note for themselves about what they think their strengths and weaknesses are um, because one of the important lessons for me and a lot of the role models have said this as well so far 
is um, it's it's about thinking and planning ahead um, so that you know we're not learning everything the hard way and, and from those difficult experiences. Um, and it's I think when I when I did this, you know, I tried to think of it in the sense of, you know, if what are my strengths and weaknesses? But if I was, um, you know, if I was my best friend, what would they say are my strengths and weaknesses? Um, because it's also helpful to kind of hold that mirror up to help you to be extra honest with yourself. Um, don't feel that you have to share any of these. This is really for you um, so that you can think about, you know, what are the skills that I have that I want to call on? And what are the skills um, that maybe I'm not so good at that maybe I might need to pull in support or I might need to learn something new to get up to speed? Um, whilst you're there, because you're on little my, on my little screen, um, Natalie, is, you know, you were saying that there were some things that you had to learn. And, you know, how, how did you overcome that? Did you did you kind of buy in support or did you go through training to get you that support? No, I don't think so. I think, um, I mean, I think uni was was a big learning curve for me where where I did kind of develop, um, you know, I had to help kind of develop skills, not just, you know, creative skills, but also I'm not particularly organised. So, um, but I think that's okay that just because on paper, maybe you don't fit the business model, like, you know, being organised doesn't help. But for me, I then combat that. Like I've always got to do lists. I, you know, I'm, I'm, my house is full of lists that, that go on every Sunday. I kind of start one for the, for the week of things that I want to get done. So, and then keep up to date with that. So something that I'm maybe not necessarily really great at is okay because I kind of recognize that that's where I fall down a little bit. So as long as I'm then compensating for that, I find that so I think that's just come from, you know, knowing knowing myself really and knowing what it is that I need to be able to to do that. Because at the end of the day, I can't then just message clients and say, oh, I'm really sorry, I forgot to do that. Like that's for, for me to be able to be in business. I have to be organized. But then just because it doesn't come naturally doesn't mean that 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 counts me out. So definitely yeah. it's something that you can practice, isn't it? And, yeah. and Laurie, I know that you said the saying that, you know, there are things that you um that, that you had to learn how did you overcome that and how did you um kind of get through that process you said you know it was it was difficult to um to bring together some of those new tech skills um were there skills that you had to bring in from others or is it something that you thought no I'm gonna enjoy learning this from scratch um I suppose there were some things like building a website um I got a professional to do that for me um but in terms of how the system came together you know when the order came in and dealing with that uh, bringing it on to the, the maker artist um and how i could be as efficient as possible i suppose i i learned that um myself um and also i think even now i take inspiration and learn things from listening to business podcasts um, like Conversation of Inspiration, Holly Tucker, um, where you hear about, you know, successful business people um, and where things didn't quite work out for them. And so I think you learn from things like that as well. Definitely. That's a really good shout, actually. Um, podcasts can be so very helpful. Um, there's one that I like, um, which is also a Facebook community called um, Doing It For The Kids. And it's all um, people in business who have got young children. Um, so it's you know talking about some of the barriers, learning some of those kind of um, skills and you know, things that you need to be able to juggle. Um, yeah, so that's a really, really helpful, isn't it? So what was the podcast that you said that you, you listened to? Um, in the early days, it was Conversations of Inspiration. Yeah. With Holly Tucker. Um, and, well, more recently, I've been listening to a Diary of a CEO, um, Stephen Bartlett. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing those. Um, and again, like you say, it's, you know, it's 
different podcasts that can help you in those different stages of your journey, isn't it? Um, I want to come back to just this kind of strengths and weaknesses. And it isn't something that I want everyone to share um, because this, this is all for you and to kind of, um, you know, learn to think about um, what you're good at and how you can use that to your advantage. Um, when I did this for myself, lots of people said, oh, you're really kind and you're really um, enthusiastic. Um, and, and it was really interesting because whilst they were saying that they were strengths, I'd written down those exact things as weaknesses because, um, you know, whilst I can be enthusiastic for me, it felt like I'm too good at saying yes to things, which leads me to being overwhelmed, which leads me to being less organised or anxious and stressed. Um, and so I had to find a way to bring that back to the positive that other people were saying of thinking to myself, you know, what are the the three things that I'm going to work on right now, because any more than that is going to be overwhelming. And, um, you know, and I'd have to think really seriously about a new opportunity if I was able to do it, because I think, you know, I know that I could say yes, but that's going to make me actually feel um, that it, it's heading towards a weakness um, or kindness. Um, lots of people, when I asked them this about myself, said, yeah, you're really kind. Um, and I had a very difficult um, lesson to learn in um, setting up my business um, when it was time to come to employ other people. I was um, interviewing people and it was for um, a um, it, it was a new position um, that was aimed at young people to get their first um, their first ever job. And so I wanted to be kind and I wanted to give the job to the person who had said um, they'd never had that opportunity before. Um, and rather than give the role to the person who was the best for the job at the time, I was looking through um, CVs and interviewing people thinking to myself, but I really want to give that opportunity to the person who just hasn't had it yet. Um, that massively backfired because I had to, in the end, recruit um, another two times into that same position. Um, because of the stage that I was at in the business, I didn't have the ability to give that person who'd never had a job before um, the time and support that they needed to be successful. Um, what I really needed at the time was someone who had enough skills, who had done some work and um, who could come in and be really good at administration and pulling things together. Um, and in reality, whilst I'd been attempting to be kind and give that person their first opportunity the reality was that it wasn't good for them and it wasn't good for me or my business um, so I think it's really important to kind of look at those strengths and weaknesses not only to help you narrow down into what it is that you want to do every day um, but also to think about them from each side of the coin and think about strategies so that you don't trip up and learn the, those lessons the hard way like I did um, I don't know whether there's anything else you wanted to add to that before we move on, um, either Natalie or Lori. Cool, thank you. Um, OK, so I want you to now think about um, what it is that you want more of, um, exactly like um, Natalie was saying, you know, she wanted to wake up every day doing things that she loved. Um, for me, when I was first going into my business and, and things were going okay, um, it was about thinking um, that I, I wanted to focus, I wanted to be creative, um, and I loved social media, so I wanted to really delve into that because it was something fun that I enjoyed. Um, so just make a note for yourselves of you know what it is that you want more of in your life, um, in your working life. You know, what are these things that will, that will get you to jump out of bed and think, yeah, I'm really excited about the day ahead. I'm really excited about taking this idea forward um, and just note them down for yourself. And if anyone wants to add any of them to the chat and um, to talk through, that would be really cool. But there's no pressure because the point of this workshop is it's about doing something for yourself. Um, so is it that you want focus? Is it that you want creativity? Is it that you enjoy social media? You know, maybe it's something totally, totally different. Um, and once you've done that, I want you to think about the things that you want less of. Um, that 
that first image there is me saying yes to everything. I don't want to be overwhelmed. So I had to learn to say to say no sometimes. Um, I didn't want the nine to five um, and email. Email was my nemesis. It still is. So I had to find strategies of saying, OK, how can I run a business and not have to spend my day responding to endless emails? Because that does not bring me joy. Um, so it was little things like, you know, just having um, a kind of autoresponder on the, the main um, email address saying, you know, we'll get back to you when we're ready. Um, don't Please don't expect an immediate reply, um, because then that just took the pressure off. And it meant that I was able to reply when I had the, the time to, not constantly being attached to your phone and, and responding to emails every moment of the day. Um, you know, just thinking, right, I'm going to set 30 minutes aside each day where I will do those responses and then that will remove that pressure from me. Um, and so really, I think why I like to make a note of this about, you know, making sure that we think about the things we want less of is so, so you can come up with strategies um, to turn the, those kind of negatives and the things that stress you in, in your work into a positive. Um, is there anyone who'd be willing to share anything that's on their kind of positives or negatives to know, to talk through? Um, we had a message earlier from Helen. I um, don't know if you want me to read that now, uh, Sarah. Yeah, cool. That, it's yeah, sort of quite nice. related. Um, so Helen said the sense of achievement she gets when she learns something new is always amazing. But often when she's looking to learn something new, she gets into a panic that she won't be able to. And she also says she has to push herself um, to force herself out of her comfort zone, um, especially of, uh, over the last couple of years dealing with the pandemic as well. Definitely, definitely. And I think it's, you know, I, I was on a phone call this morning, actually, when I dropped my kids off and went for a walk. I was talking to a friend who runs a business um, and she was having a bit of a wobbly moment. And, um, you know, it, her business is really busy this time of year because she sells products. And, um, you know, it's just been Black Friday and her business is part of that. And she was saying, you know, I'm really, really busy. I'm juggling lots of things. You know, should I be doing this next opportunity that's come along or should I not? Um, and so really we were kind of just talking through those steps of, you know, is it going to be good for her personally and for her mental health to, to juggle that? Is it going to be good for, um, you know, the business as a whole? Or is it just a distraction that might sound good right now, but isn't going to be good in the longer term? Um, and so it's really important to kind of be really honest with ourselves, exactly like Helen was saying, that, you know, you can have those moments of panic, um, but reach out to other people because, you know, people are really happy to, to support you know quite often if you say I would like your help you know people are not going to turn you down people are honoured to to accept um that question and to be supportive um I don't know whether Laurie or Helen and um, you wanted to share anything of what it was like when you were first starting out and and some of those conversations that you had with people um you know did you talk to other other people that had gone into business or was it friends and family that that you kind of said those first things too and what were those responses like um yeah for me um family is probably a big thing um i i'd probably drive my mum and dad up the wall with the amount of ideas i go to them and they're the first ones to hear about them really um and i think sometimes it's quite good where you know i'm i'm quite stubborn as well so um sometimes you t it takes you to say the words to someone and then if they maybe come back with something that's the wrong thing so even though i put it out to them i'm very guilty of this that i drive them absolutely mental um and maybe even though I put it out there as a, you know, rhetorical thing or or maybe, you know, something that, that I was open to, actually it takes someone else saying, well, why don't you do this for you to then say, no, actually, it's this that I want to do, yeah. you know, like it's that hard headed thing. Um, so, yeah, my, my family definitely hear about it first. Um, and then, and yeah, friends, really. And then the connections that I've made then throughout the years in different fields kind of then help kind of navigate what it applies to. 
Um, but yeah, especially starting out, then yeah, the the parents bore the brunt of it really. Definitely, yeah, that's a good one. Um, you know, and it's picking the right people, isn't it? Um, you know, I originally I first went to my husband, and he was he was supportive, but he's also an accountant. So he's very, very safe. And he was like, you know, you've got to not spend any money. It's got to be as low cost as possible. And and so I was really, you know, I listened to that because it's obviously someone I respect and he, I respect his opinion. But now um, having gone through that business journey and I've actually closed that business and moved on to other things, um, you know, and I've got new ideas. And I think, do you know what? I've got that confidence now um, that when I have the idea that I want to invest in next, you know, and I'm thinking about that all the time, um, you know, it doesn't have to be low cost because I know that what I want to do is this and I know, um, you know, what I need to invest in it. Um, and it is about, you know, having that confidence to be a bit stubborn, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something I've learned over the years is that, like you were saying before, that you've just got to trust your gut and and you just sometimes have to go for it. And and if there is that little bit of doubt, then you maybe go the way where, like you say, it's not high cost or there's no high cost if, if it doesn't go to plan. but Sometimes there's only so much you can talk about it. You've got to then yeah. take the steps to actually do it. Um, so yeah, I've definitely. That's why. That's why I'm freelance, isn't it? Is to not then be tied to having to run it past everybody. So, so yeah, I'm, I've learned that to be a bit more confident in in my decisions. Amazing. And what about you, Lori? Who are the people that you first talked to when you were setting up? I think I'm about the same as Natalie. Um, growing up, I you know I had loads of ideas, and it. Um, my family probably <laughs> sick and tired of me uh, <laughs> talking about the next new idea, but um, I think with Casper, um, it was my partner that probably said, oh, I think this idea's probably got legs. So, um, th- you know, if you show me how you're going to bring it to fruition in a way, um, then, you know, um, I might believe in your idea too so I suppose you know it's it's good to talk to the ones close to you but I think it's also good to speak to people that won't just agree with everything you say and challenge the idea sometimes as well but it's that question that you said you know that was a light bulb for me of you know how are you going to show me how you can bring that idea forward you know you need people who are going to ask you those challenging questions don't you yeah definitely yeah yeah. Is there anyone who wants to share any of their ideas? And, you know, this is just off the cuff. Don't feel that you have to. Um, but is there anyone who who has kind of got an idea that they wanted to talk through? Um, you know, it's just I think because we've been talking about this and, and you know, this is a lovely space to to kind of give you that opportunity. Um, but I don't want to throw anyone into a panic zone by doing that. So don't feel that you have to. Um, but through the rest of, of this session, I think we've only got about half an hour left. Um, if anyone's willing to do that, just drop it in at some point and we can come into it. Um, I wanted to talk to you about someone in particular who was um, a person that kind of got me through um, some of the reasons why I was doing what I was doing. Um and, you know, when I had those low moments of, you know, I'd gone and pitched to someone and I think there was one particular I'd driven all the way to visit this guy um, who I thought and on, on email, it, it looked like he would be a really good um, client. And after going in with my pitch, I had what I refer to as a verbal pat on the head. Um, and he was like, oh, no, 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 you're not for us. But, you know, you, you do good things with the, the girls that you want to work with, dear was the response that I had and I left that meeting raging and really upset um but got over it and I got over it because I was working with a client who was a um, housing association and I was supporting their tenants and Christine was one of those tenants who'd come along to one of the first courses that I was delivering um and it was a kind of a course aimed at women who hadn't been in work to get them back out of it and on the first day of that course Christine came in and she just said oh you know there's there's nothing that I can write on a CV because I've just been a mum. I've just been a mum for the last 20 years. And, you know, I, I couldn't um, we were delivering in um, in a building that was opposite um, Iceland. And she was like, I couldn't even get a job over Iceland because I've got nothing to write on an application form or a CV. Um, over the four weeks um, that we did that course one day a week, 
it came out that Christine um, was, you know, not just a mum, she was a brilliant mum. And, and it's that just was the bit that she shouldn't have been putting there because it turned out that she'd been running and, and she'd founded a support group for parents of um, of children who were um, going through addiction. And she'd been running that support group um, for over a decade. But she'd been telling herself that she'd done nothing for the last 10 years when actually she'd been running this um, hugely important support group for a long, long time. Um, and a few years down the line, she ended up being shortlisted for a Women's Fire Award and has now um, got a really, um, you know, a, a job that makes her feel happy and makes her feel confident every day. And her children are really, really proud of what she's doing. Um, and I think I go through all those highs and lows of business just um, just to, to do that for Christine and just to bring Christine and get the best out of her. Um, if she was the only person that I helped in the years that I was running that particular business, then I'd do it all again for her, If you know, because she was just brilliant. And you'll find that there will be people that will make it worthwhile for you. And there will be times when you have those massive hooray moments, um, like Natalie, and, you know, kind of working where you're doing those murals in, in schools. Um, I don't know about you, Laurie, if there's any particular kind of hooray moments that you've had in your business that, that you would like to tell us about. Uh, the one that comes to mind is um, one of the makers that we've got said she never sold so many pieces to the London area um, and opening that door for her I suppose gave me a buzz and you know every time an order comes in for someone I get as excited as them um, so I think it's sharing yeah. the joy with them as well yeah so you're kind of sharing that joy of, of them getting their business out there uh, yeah. that must be lovely each time that you get that, that order Definitely. Oh, that's really lovely. Um, so I wanted to to just move on because we, we are low on time and talk about something that is um, one thing that I do quite regularly, um, not just for business, but it's really good in, in day to day life. Um, but it comes from a business that inspired me. Um, and it's this. I don't know whether you can see it. It's um, a lovely yellow diary um, from two women and it's called Positive Planner. Um, they set up Positive Planners when they were um, both going through um, some mental health concerns, um, and they both had tips and tricks that they were sharing with each other, saying, you know, this is something that I do. I write down three things every day that make me feel good, or, you know, I'm the, you know, one of the, the pair was an artist, and she was, like, doing pencil drawings and then taking time to colour them in, um, you know, and they were talking about you know, what are the, the ways that they um, practice self-care? Um, you know, how do they kind of tell themselves every day that they've they've done something good? What What's the gratitude that they have? And they put all of these tools into this planner, um, you know, just from their own experiences. And now it's a massively successful business that is, um, is a job for a permanent job for both of them. Um, you can find them on Instagram um, because they do some really good workshops that are helpful. Um, but they do this this one task in the book that I do quite regularly with myself um, called a high five. So it's as simple as um, taking a pen or pencil, drawing around your hand and then just taking a few moments, you know, sit with a cup of tea, do this on your own later or have a quick um, go at it now. Um, and and just take five minutes to reflect on your own achievements um, think about things that you've done in the last couple of weeks. And, you know, maybe it could be a year. Maybe it could be something that you've done this morning that makes you feel that you've achieved something um, that you've done something that makes you want to um, give yourself a high five. Um, the reason I do this is because and I do it regularly is because it's good to check in on you know, knowing what your strengths are. Um, and what those strengths are at any given time, because um, you can pull those things into your business and into your idea. Um, this was when I, I first did it at the time when I was um, when I was setting up my business. And these are the things that I'd, I put as my hoorays. 
so I'd overcome maternity discrimination and 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 that was where I was channeling that kind of negative experience into the positive of the work that I was doing um I'd run two half marathons um which is someone who couldn't run for a bus was was quite um, a big achievement and it was just something that I thought you know it was I was able to manage my own mental health by getting out and going for a run and that would help me in turn to um to have the brain capacity to to do um bring forward my business idea um I've been raising two lovely children and I've been able to balance that and and I know when that's out of kilter when I'm saying yes to too many things because I turn into someone who's a bit more shouty and snappy than I than I like to be um I help other women to find their passion um you know, that's where I turned that kind of passion of my my values into the work that I wanted to do. Um, and I led successful campaigns. Um, so I knew that they those were the things that brought me joy. If they're things that I could look back and think, yeah, these are the things I'm really proud of about myself. Um, then I knew that, that I could channel those things that would get me out of bed every day into the work that I was doing. Um, so I want you to kind of take some time to do that for yourself um, because really what you'll what you'll find exactly as I did is that you know those things that bring you joy that you're proud of are things that fit your values as a person um, so all of these for example they're you know the things that are important values to me in my life I value my health my family um, you know women and gender equality um, connecting and helping people um, and all of that comes through in, in the things that get me out of bed every day um, and I think it's really important that this can be linked back to um, what our lovely guest was saying earlier was it Sophie um, in how you've got all these ideas but you don't know how to pull them together you know if you just do some of these simple exercises and I'll send you a note with a couple of others then um, it helps you to kind of pull those ideas and focus them down into actually, you know, what are my intrinsic values? What is it that um, make, fills me with passion and gets me doing the things that I want to do? Um, I'll give you a second to kind of, if anybody wants to jump in and add anything, because I don't want to be talking at you when there's an opportunity for you to speak. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I think this is really, it's definitely something I'm guilty of not doing. I think um, because I get quite focused on like the end result for a couple of years, for a couple of years ago, um, I got fixated on like, you know, the the big thing, what big thing was going to, for me, it was like getting published, like a book publishing. And I was getting so fixated on that the big thing wasn't happening was that I was missing out on like all the little jobs that I was getting done and, you know, what that was then meaning for those clients so even if it's someone that you've done a portrait for if that person then is happy with that that's that's the big thing you know not yeah. getting so fixated on you know when the big career break was going to happen I suppose um so yeah I think taking the time to to kind of look back at well ju even just that week of what can you be really happy about and like you say even if it's not business um I've got for some strange reason, no idea why, I've got into the habit of going to the gym before seven o'clock in the morning. So, I mean, even if that's the only thing I do with my day, that should be something that I celebrate that I've managed to get there in, with the dark mornings. So, and that, that then helps with my mental health. Then. So even when I'm really busy with work, that's not something that I should drop because that's something that yeah. you know, kind of really helps with, with me be able, being able to function then rather than it being all work. So, so yeah, that's a really good good thing I'll have to bear that in mind indeed yeah definitely and it is you know it's as simple as just taking a taking a pencil and drawing around your hand you know it doesn't have to be a work of art it's just an opportunity for you to sit with a cup of tea and reflect on your week um another thing that I do day to day um that will help you kind of you know celebrate those steps towards getting your idea off the ground is you know just think about what are the you know two or three things those big chunky things that I've done today and if I focus on those three things every day what have I achieved by the end of the week because it's really easy to be distracted or to get to the end of the week and think I just don't know what I've done what have I achieved you know if you take that moment to think well actually you know at the end of the day what are the couple of big things that I have focused on today um, then it can help you to get to that 
bigger picture and, and hit that goal that you want to hit. Um, I'm conscious of time because I know that it, it has disappeared really quickly. So, and I know this is really late in the session that we come to this, but it's because, um, you know, there's so much out there, particularly with the Simply Do platform that will help you to kind of figure out your idea that what we wanted to do in this session is kind of have those building blocks and that strong base for you to, to kind of understand yourself and your motivations a little better um, before you go down to the root of the idea. Um, so what is that idea? You know, it could be more than one, but just take a minute to scribble it down for yourselves, you know, write it in the chat if you want to, um, you know, think about what are those ideas that made you sign up for this session and, and why do you think that that your particular idea can work? Um, I ask this because there are lots of ideas that you could talk to someone about and, and they'll say, oh, well, that's already being done. Um, where I live, for example, you know, there's, there's like six barbershops and every time I walk past them, I think, are there not enough barbershops around here? Um, but, you know, there's always an opportunity um, for you to do something in the way that you want to do it. Um, and it's about bringing your, you know, exactly like Lowry is, is finding that gap in the market or, you know, exactly like, like you're doing, Natalie, is to, to find your spin on something that is, you know, already out there. Um, and I wanted to share with you three um, people who are people that I admire in business. Um, firstly, um, with with the feather duster is a lady called Rachel Flanagan. Her business is called Mrs Bucket, um, and it's now a, a million pound franchise. But she started it when she was eighteen, when she borrowed ten pound from her mum because she um, she knew she wanted to work for herself, um, and she got that business going with you know nothing more than ten pounds and a mop and a bucket, um, because she knew that she could clean really well and she had a brain for marketing and she marketed it in a way that enabled her to build that huge franchise and, and do really well for herself you know and, and you might think there's endless cleaners out there but if you can put your individual spin on it there's always a way that you can do it for yourself um the guy in the middle is um a friend of mine peter who and um, before lockdown he was running a little coffee stand um, at the train station and, um, you know, obviously when lockdown happened, his business was was, you know, came to a very, very abrupt stop overnight because there was no one getting on a train that would then buy a coffee. Um, he had some external pressures in that his wife had just had a baby and he was the main breadwinner. And at, at that time, and he said, you know, I had to find a way to get my business to keep going and to keep a roof over our heads and I had to do it differently. Um so he turned his coffee into what was his passion um, that was about conversations. And so in lockdown, he built this bike and he started popping up at different places around the town, um, you know, outside the school um, by the seafront, um, you know, in the park on a Sunday. And, and, and he managed to build a really, really strong business out of that to the point that, um, you know, the whole community chipped in um, and bought him a new bike when his the one that he'd made is, had broke um, and it was on TV earlier this week on um, on BBC Wales. So you can you can have a look back at that if you want to. Um, and he's now got hundreds of people going to have um, a swim in the sea every morning um, near where we are um, and then buying a coffee from him. So he's turned his whole passion of, you know, it's not just the coffee, it's the conversation into a business that sustains his his life. Um, and the third person there is my lovely hairdresser, Noala. Um, I found her in lockdown, um, kind of browsing um, Instagram and was watching endless videos where you can lose hours um, just watching her transformations of people's frizzy hair into lovely curls like she had. Um, and her speciality is curly hair. So you know, she had that little bit something different. You know, it isn't just another hair salon. Yeah, another thing that we've got lots of that people could say, oh, you know, why do you want to go into business doing that? We've got lots of them. Um, she's really successful because she's got a specific way of um, getting her particular passion and skills out there. Um, and she has people that travel from all over the world. Um, you know, people have, have turned up on coming to Bristol from flights, um, 
from Germany, from all over Europe, because they want to see her as a hairdresser because they've seen her online. Um, and, and so they're all people that are doing businesses that is something that's already out there, but they've put their own spin on it. Um, and I think that's really important. Is there anything that anyone wants to add to any of that? Yeah, just that I think that that's definitely something that when I left uni, I was really daunted that, you know, I was in a class of 30 other illustrators yeah. um, and that I know that every year new illustrators getting turned out, then people who don't go to uni, you know, there's, I think sometimes it can be daunting when you're kind of pitching to someone, you know, that, that you're not the only person that, that they can go to. But I think it's about taking confidence in you know, it's not even just about obviously I've I've tried to develop a style that made me put puts me in some sort of unique way. Um I'm sure if you looked hard enough there's someone else drawing something quite similar. Um but I think it's it's everything that buys into that, you know, like like I said before, problem solving, all that kind of your way of thinking then also makes you unique. The way you would tackle a brief is different to how another illustrator would tackle it and then different again to the other other illustrators. So yeah, I think it's just about knowing, for me, it's about knowing how I do things and, and being okay that if that doesn't suit a, a brief, that's okay because I'm staying true to kind of what it is that I want to create and, and how I want to create it. So Definitely, definitely. I think, you know, we were going through this on, on a previous session and someone said, you know, when, when you look at gin, you know, someone says, oh, it's just another gin. It's not. We've all got our own particular taste. And that's why there's like, you know, 55 different flavours of gin out there. And, um, you know, everyone's got their own taste and you might not be theirs, but that's fine because there'll always be people that you know, kind of want to work with you in, in, in your way of doing things. So in the last 10 minutes, I want to come back to what we um, what we talked about at the start and um, not letting some of that kind of exec language put you off because um, I know this particularly was how I felt in that I'd gone along to some of these seminars and thought you know I just don't know I don't I'm not good at finance you know I was lucky in particular that I was married to an accountant and I could just say explain this to me um, you know and there will be people out there that you you can ask exactly those questions too um, but I kept thinking like what is a mission statement? What is an executive summary? I'm being asked for a business plan, but I don't know what these terms mean. Um, and someone, when I first talked about my idea, gave me this book. I don't know whether you can see it. Um, and it's called The um, the Seed Handbook. And it's, it's more of a feminist way um, of going into business. Um, and so I've, I've kind of taken some inspiration from that to put together um, a model that you can use that will kind of take you away from this um, very straightforward, dry, um, you know, write your business plan and five sheets of A4 um, using some of these headings into something that is um, a bit more feminist and feminine and, you know, is approached that is just a slightly more creative. Um, and so, you know, again, you don't have to be an artist, although I'd love to see um, a nice sunflower or something um, that, that has been drawn by Natalie. Um, but really, it's just a case of, you know, having a circle in the middle of your bit of paper um, and in that centre, writing down, you know, what is the core of your idea? Um, you know, maybe if you've got more than one idea, you can start with just one of them. Um, so in that centre, it's thinking, what is it that I particularly want to do? Um, once you've got that, I want you to use each of the petals on that flower to kind of scope out that idea into something wider. Um, you know, what are those different skills that we've talked about that you have? And, um, you know, what are the goals that you want to set yourself? I know that um, both of our role models have said how, you know, they had specific goals that they wanted to achieve. Um, so maybe set yourself in one of those petals, you know, a, a set goal and then a couple of pointers on how that you're going to achieve that goal. Um, marketing, you know, marketing can be a minefield, um, but just think about it in really simple steps. Is your business something that you want to start with online? And so do you need social media profiles? Do you need, um, you know, a website? Um, 
and, and it's really just, you know, what's the skeleton of the things that you need to build that idea? I also want you to come back to your, um, your, the things that you want to get, you know, what are your skills? What are the things that you're really good at? Um, and put those into one of those petals. Think these are the skills that I've got and these are the skills that I need to use in this business. And the things that you said maybe you're less good at, you know, these are the skills that you need to build on. And how do you need to get better at those things for your business? Maybe it's that you need to call someone in to do the finance part, to do um, you know, any techie parts, or maybe you've got the time and capacity that, you know, that you could think, right, I'm gonna learn this because I do have time to, to, to sit down and, and learn that new skill. Um, Think about who's involved. Is it something that your is your idea just you? Are there other people that you want to talk to to bring in? Um, are there other people that you think actually there's someone that I've admired that I want to talk to about about doing something similar? We had one entrepreneur last week, um, who Lottie, who was um, working on on events, um, and she ended up and moving that business and changing it slightly and, and working as a partnership business with someone else um so there's always lots of ways to come in these different ideas um and then once you've got this it's your absolute skeleton that you can take on to the simply do platform and i finished 10 minutes early because we've got the opportunity firstly to have some questions, but I also wanted to give you specific time when at the end of this session that you've already booked in to be in this session, but you can utilize that time um, to get straight onto the Simply Do platform, get yourself registered and set yourself up over there. Um, so it will only take you five minutes. You'll have the link on here, um, but just utilize this five minutes. You know, you don't have to put your idea out there instantly, but just sign up and make that commitment to yourself that you'll take that first small step and sign up to that platform today. Um, Alexia, are there any questions at all? Yes. Um, um, a question from Kirsty. What was the book that you mentioned? Um, it's called The Seed Handbook, but I'll okay. um, send a link so you can send it around to everyone. Brilliant. OK, thank you. If I get rid of these slides, then I can see you again. There we are. Better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It might be easier for you to see it now. Yeah. I know. I'm oh, a bit yes. cloudy. Yes. But no. Yes. I'll um. I'll send you a link to to all of the things that I've talked about, so people have got those links. That's brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. Any other questions from anyone? Well, oh, thanks, Paige, for adding that link up. Um. Yeah. And yeah. Any final comments from our amazing um. Our amazing role models any part in wisdom that you would like to share um, not very wise um, <laughs> no, um, I think my main thing I think I said before is just to don't let like like you say in the business jargon or or you know just just because I work for myself doesn't mean I think people kind of mistake it as that every day is amazing you know every day is super easy or you know you shouldn't really complain because you're working for yourself but I mean there are tough days there are there are you know months where work is a bit more slow there's then months where you can't move the work and every client then doesn't know about the others so they all think that they're the most important one that you're working on which is fine so when it's days like that where you know you the business side of what I love to do is very, very heavy. I kind of try to stay excited. So a bit like what you were saying, where getting out of bed and, and thinking of things is to stay. Don't let all of that kind of get in the way of why it is that you're doing it. Stay excited. And sometimes that can be, you have to fight for that. You have to try and keep that. That, that can be the job. Is So I think that would be my main advice is just do whatever it is you can that, that makes you still be excited even years and years later for me I've been in this for six years now um, and not every day has been great but yeah I can honestly say that I'm still excited by what I do every email that goes off the little girl in me is kind of like oh that could be the next big job so it's just staying excited about what what's to come as well 
Amazing. Thank you so much. It's so, so true. Everything you're saying, you know, it's it's just like daily life, isn't it? It's it's on us to to kind of make things um, work for us in the way that we want them to. And not every day is going to be amazing, but we'll go learn something from each of those steps as we go. Thank you so much. Is there anything you wanted to add to that, Lori? Sorry, I dropped out the call for a second. Um, That's OK. What was the question? Sorry. Just any anything that you wanted to add before we finish? Any parting advice that you have from your experiences? Um, yeah, I think I'd agree with Natalie. You know, it is a roller coaster, and um, I think um, what I'm trying to do more of is, you know, getting the exercise in first thing, so you're, you know, prepared for the day. Um, and also trying in the evenings just to, before I go to, to bed, just write what I'm grateful about, you know, whether that's business related or, or you know, family or, you know, all those little things that bring you joy. Um, and yeah, you know, in business you do get setbacks or things don't quite work out, but I think um, it's, it's that resilience just to carry on if you've got that passion definitely definitely I think yeah there was something that really struck last week that was exactly that you know you have that passion um, and it's passion and hard work together that will get you through um, you know and there will be ups and downs but if you keep at that passion and hard work then then you know things will work out in the end and and to make sure so your final final um, activity and we'll send obviously all the things that we've talked about today. But what I want people to do with this final five minutes is to go straight from here onto that Simply Do platform, register yourselves, and then everyone can keep talking there and build your own network. Thank you, Sarah. Sorry, I was going to speak, but my microphone was off. <laughs> no, and thank you, Alexia. Thank you so much for all of your support and bringing all of this together. It's been really, really lovely. It's been really enjoyable, Sarah. We've had three sessions with Sarah, so this is the final one today. Over the last three weeks, we've been working together on this. Um, so thank you very much, Sarah, for running these sessions. Thank you, Natalie and Laurie. Uh, also to Paige for doing the demo of the platform. Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, we are recording this. It's going to go on the um, playlist on YouTube. And once it's up there, I will send you all a link and feel free to share it far and wide. You may know other people who are in the same boat and are thinking of setting up their own business. So feel free to, to share widely. So I'll end the event now. And thanks again, everybody. And hopefully see you again sometime. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Have a lovely Bye. rest of the week. Bye.